Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, Good. Chief. How are Hi, you? Welcome back. Hi. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome back, uh, Emily, for a fellow. How you doing? Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm really, really excited about today. So thank you for letting me come back and join with you guys. Absolutely. And, and I'm super excited about today's guest because we have a, a, a rock and roll royalty on the line and, and apparently a, a sixth grade school teacher as well, as, as we learned before we got on the show. So uh, without further ado, Emily, please introduce today's guest. We are honored to welcome a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer today. He's the co-founder of KISS, America's number one gold award winning group of all time. His band has sold more than 100 million albums worldwide. He is one of the world's most recognized personalities and a huge supporter of our military heroes. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Gene Simmons. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the clap. Go ahead. You know, there's a, story, there's a story behind that. There was a story behind that. It's not just a bad joke. There was a young man who sang lead in a group called Crocus, a guy named Mike Storacci, if the mythology is correct. And they came from Malta, where English is not necessarily the first language. And on their first tour, you know, people were clapping. And I have this on tape. And he, and he said, thank you very much for the, giving me the clap. And... Uh, <laughs> That can, mean, that, that can mean that can be so many different things, G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. But thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So it's an honor having you with us today. Can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from today? I'm in the hills of Bever I'm in the hills of Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that sounds mythical. <laughs> Otherwise known as no, I don't know. I'm sorry? No, I was saying I wish I was in Beverly Hills. That's that's amazing. Well, stick around, maybe. maybe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the history very, very uh, clear, very short. Um, there was a guy that owned all the land up here, of course, stolen from America's Indians, and he had two daughters, Beverly and Holly. And originally, the big Hollywood sign said Hollywood Land. And before he passed, he gave the the woodlands to Holly, which became Hollywood, Hollywood land. And he gave the hills to his other daughter, Beverly, Beverly's Hills, Beverly Hills. Oh, love that. I well, Gene, we know you're That's awesome. busy gearing up for the Kiss End of the Road farewell tour. You'll be rocking out across the globe one last time with the tour relaunching this spring. So what are some things that you're doing to prepare for the jam-packed tour schedule? You're always in such great shape. I feel like you can outrun even Chief, you know, the youngest of um, airmen or soldiers. But how do you stay in such incredible shape, though? I hate it, but every day I get up and uh, my beloved wifey and I and the dogs go hiking up in the hills, anywhere from three to five miles every day. Look how good looking I am. I'm the one all the way on the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually much more stunning in real life. You should see me. And so you got, you know, you got to use it or lose it. It's an old adage. Right. And a subtractage too. See what I did there? Adage subtracted. <laughs> yeah. These are semantics, but I'm not anti-semantic. No. Why would I? I hate I to be Monday or, or, or Tuesday. You don't want to be either. Yes. <laughs> Gene, what piqued your interest in music as a child, and how did you achieve your dream of rocking and rolling all night? <laughs> I was less interested in music and more interested in the larger-than-life personalities. The, uh, there were a lot of one-hit wonders, and there's background music and music and soundtracks and all that stuff, and your, your mind doesn't connect with it. It's the visual imagery 
of of an Elvis or a Little Richard uh, or Jerry Lee Lewis. Little Richard used to jump on top of the piano and punish it. You know, he'd play it, and besides the great singing and writing, it was those larger-than-life personalities, Chuck Berry doing the, you know, the duck walk. And I have to say, I was asked by the Berry family and proud to say I did the eulogy at Chuck Berry's funeral, sadly. And it was more about the person, the larger-than-life personalities that attracted me. Yes, the music, we love the music, but music without the larger-than-life personalities is just background sounds, which is the philosophy of what uh, KISS is all about, which is if you never heard a KISS song and if you turn the sound off, you should still be able to be wowed by the live show as opposed to a singer who stands in front of a microphone. If you turn the sound down, you imagine this. <laughs> because live events are audio visual. Kids out there, these are big words like gymnasium. Audio visual means for the ears and for the eyes. And the performers that understand that continue to be big performers. It bears noting Garth Brooks, uh, uh, Beyonce, you know, whoever does big shows, Paul McCartney, there often are fireworks and all kinds of other stuff. Where do you think they got that from? Air supply? <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, we did interview Air Supply, and they were, they were pretty awesome too. So, <laughs> but I do want to find. I'm sure they're terrific. Yes. <laughs> so, so we we definitely want to uh, find find out some history about Kiss. So, how did you meet uh, co-founder Paul Stanley? And uh, you got any good memories that you can share with us uh, with making music with him? Embarrassing memories. Um, I was introduced <laughs> to Paul, uh, but I've been an embarrassing person all my life. But if you're delusional, you don't care. So I met uh, poor Paul at a friend's house, Stephen Carnell. And I was delusional and continue to be. I thought I was the only one who wrote songs. I, I know it sounds stupid and crazy, but I thought Lennon and McCartney and all the other people who wrote songs, that was another reality, another dimension. But in the real world, I, I was the only one I knew who could write songs. I figured it out. And so I was introduced to Paul and Steve, who was introduced us, said, you know, Paul, Paul writes songs, too. I'm going, oh, yeah? Let's hear one of your songs. So he played a song called Sunday Driver, which we then went on to record. And I went, wow. <clears throat> let me be your Sunday driver. Let me be your Monday man. I said, wow, that's, that's really good. Uh, so he said, why don't you play one of your songs? So I did. My uncle is a raft, and he always keeps me floating. He goes, what the hell is that? It was one of my classics, which nobody has heard since. And uh, <laughs> the first impression, he didn't like me at all. He thought I was arrogant and full of myself and delusional. And thank goodness we both got over that stuff. And uh, our, our story is really a case of one and one equals three. You're lucky if you find somebody who knows stuff you don't, uh, and hopefully you know stuff that they don't. And then the merge of the two equals the greater than the sum of its parts or something along those lines. Right, Gene. Well, you and Paul, you know, being able to get over your differences and just make a lot of great music and make history is a big part of why we are so excited to have you on today. Your influence in pop culture spans generations. Like you said, you know, your stage presence and the music and the persona, that's what, you know, gets our generation going and millennials going because we look at Beyonce, we look at all these people and we see Kiss. I also read an article in Esquire that said without Kiss, today's music wouldn't exist. So when you formed Kiss back in the seventies, what was your vision for the band? It's in the 1870s, I think. <laughs> we we wanted to put together the band we never saw on stage. 
it's a little, you know, self-aggrandizement kind of a headline thing that, to say that without Kiss, there wouldn't be today's music. That's, that's not really so. Rap owes nothing for Kiss and uh, certainly a lot of pop stuff, EDM, electronic music, none of that has anything to do with what we do. But I think it's fair to say, even if you go to an EDM concert, uh, our contribution perhaps is in the live uh, performance area. When right. we first started, before you guys were born, uh, before, when we first started, we, we didn't think it was enough to get up on stage and just play songs. So we literally decided to wear more makeup and higher heels than the ladies on the show. And that's literal. My heels are seven inches and above. And uh, studs and armor and stuff. I'm walking around with close to 45 pounds of armor, guitars, and all that. It's backbreaking work. But any, any young lady will tell you when she, at the end of a date with her stiletto heels and stuff, her back is killing her and so are her feet. It's not easy. Uh, beauty is pain. Agreed. <laughs> and so we wanted to put together, we wanted to do stuff on stage that nobody had done before, which meant combining Fourth of July fireworks shows, special effects, magic, you know, stuff like that. And unfortunately I decided, oh yeah, I should spit fire during the shows which nobody had done before, not in a band. So you take stuff from there and you bring it over here and then you create something that hasn't existed before. And uh, we are approaching, believe it or not, Top Too Far Off is going to be our 50th year. And boy, do I look good. Yeah. <laughs> and the amazing thing is, I never would have imagined that uh, I'd be here at 72 years of age, uh, even thinking or doing things, because unfortunately, I, I knew some people who passed away before. So I'm in great shape. The band's terrific. But one last time, we're going to be uh, going around the world. And we, we already did 125 cities around the world before the pandemic hit so we're going to pick it up and we're going to continue going to play the stadiums in south america and then europe and then australia which is already sold out thank goodness I go around the world one more time and then hang up our platform heels because there's nothing as sad as a boxer that stays in the ring too long or a band that stays on stage too long you know you want to remember the uh, the best of them. I you know it's sad that Marilyn Monroe passed away, uh, Elvis as well. But you never got to see them as uh, in a wheelchair throwing their you know teeth at the audience. So right. you remember them as these iconic, the iconic imagery, and I think in in some way at least white folks, you know, white folks should get off the stage before they get old. B.B. King, that's another story. That's, you know, when you're God's children, because uh, black don't crack and you can be forever young because you've got that wonderful skin. God damn it. Look at you. And <laughs> when you see uh, when you see the iconic and legendary B.B. King, who even though he couldn't stand up, was sitting down playing the blues when his mid eighties, that effing rocks. Am I allowed to say F U C K I N G? No. Sure. That. <laughs> yeah. That. That fucking rocks. But uh, white folks can't do that. When I see a you know white guy sitting down, you know, saying, "Hey, man, get up." So, um, meeting little Richard when when he was much much older. Uh, was one of the highlights of my life. I remember taking my son, Nick, and he was six, seven years old. And we go backstage and I'm trying to explain to Nick, this is little Richard. You have to understand before this and before that, it was little Richard and Chuck Berry and Fats Domino. These are the forefathers of what became rock and roll. 
And, uh, you know, he may be a little shy and he may not actually say it, but he kind of invented rock and roll. So when I introduced him to Little Richard, he said, young man, I'm Little Richard and I invented rock and roll. (laughs) (laughs) It was one of the best. It was just a great, one of those great moments. Like, why wait for somebody else to say how great you are? Just tell them. (laughs) I I don't think I think there's an appetite. So if you ever decide to, to keep going and, and throw your teeth at people, I'm sure you'll still fill out a stadium of people trying to catch your that's teeth. A, I'm re- that's a really sweet thing to say. I'm really hungry. Let's go get a burger. <laughs> <laughs> throw my teeth at people. And Gene, fans worldwide know you for your amazing stage presence. Your appearance both on and off stage has helped you grow a fan base that spans generations. What is the story behind your kiss persona, The Demon? When I came to America, I was born in Israel. I know I don't look Swiss. When I came to America, <laughs> I, I had never seen, in 1958, I'd, I'd never even heard of television. I know it's difficult in this modern age of cell phones and all that stuff. Here's, uh, I want to show you my cell phone because I'm I really like it. Oh, yeah. oh, that's awesome. Right. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> by, the way, the, by the way, the copper is an interesting scientific fact is having copper on your cell phone actually minimizes the amount of uh, bacteria and virus that you can have, including COVID. That's right. <gasps> copper has a quality. You should look it up. So by having your palm there, you're actually killing some quality that copper has. I'm not making it up. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, anyway, back to the game. <laughs> well, I knew there was um, a reason I had all these pennies in my pocket. <laughs> I don't know, but I was hoping you'd give it to me. <laughs> so what was the question? It's going to get worse, oh. I know. <laughs> so, no, I just, what is the uh, story behind your kiss persona, the demon? Oh, so when I first came to America with my mother, I'd never seen a television set and uh, we hardly, I mean, I may have gone to see one movie uh, in Israel. Good looking son of a bitch. Look at that guy. (laughs) By the way, I would stick out my tongue now, but the floor's a little dirty. (laughs) See, that's my tongue, tongue in cheek, but not my tongue in your cheek. That's another story. So I, I became a big fan of comic books. And as I was learning to speak English, because English was my uh, fourth language, I spoke Hungarian and Hebrew. And in the year when we were in Israel, I also spoke some Turkish and Spanish. And now I speak uh, English, Hebrew, German, and Hungarian. And at any rate, I got, I fell in love with monster movies and comic books and all that stuff. And Kiss is really sort of a, personification, uh, you know, your childhood fantasies and all that come to life. And you're lucky if you can connect your childhood, you know, to the grown up, because being a grown up can be really boring. Remember how much fun you used to have as a kid? Yeah. Now I have these bills I have to pay every month for some reason. I don't know. I don't remember that when I was a kid. (laughs) Yeah, there's that. Yeah. So, so rumor has it that you all do your own makeup for the show. So how, how long does that yes. process take? And, uh, and and how do you keep it? To, how do you keep your makeup to stay on? So I, Emily does a, a, a makeup show for for the exchange. Uh, and so I'm sure there's a, a bunch of women, uh, women out there just trying to figure out how can I keep my makeup from running? But you all do a, a whole live show with fire and all kind of other stuff and your makeup stays intact. Well, they're completely different things. Uh, Female makeup is subtlety, you know, the shading and smoky eyes and all that. Uh, What we do is uh, different. We start off with uh, what's called white face. It's a white pancake, uh, thick, thick makeup. And you put that on. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, you can go to Cosmopolitan Gene Simmons puts makeup on his daughter. So I showed a tutorial or maybe a three-torial. See what I just did there? 
uh, show people how to put the makeup on. So it goes in stages. First, you cover your face in white, and then you outline the design of what the uh, makeup looks like. Then I take out with Q-tips the white areas so that it's blank, and then I fill it in with black, uh, which is called Stein's Black, clown makeup, basically. And then before you're done, you take uh, a uh, powder and you powder down your face. And then you take a piece of foam and you dip it in water and you sort of bake it in. And then you come in and outline the end of it. Mine take two hours. It continues to take two hours. The rest of the guys can get it done in uh, 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> no, I actually watched that tutorial um, when you put makeup on Sophie. She's so gorgeous, by the way. But at the end, she was like, maybe I can put makeup on you, Dad. And you were like, no. <laughs> so do you ever <laughs> let other people do your makeup or is it just you're so particular? It has to be you. You know, it's interesting. We've never had anyone else put makeup on our faces. We've been the only ones that uh, we continue to apply it on ourselves every show. I guess it comes down to pride, you know, pride of this thing called KISS is ours. We invented it, we trademarked it, we continue to, you know, play our own instruments instead of having a tape in the background. It's pride. It reminds me of the old Italian shoemaker we had in our neighborhood a long time ago. This guy never looked at the stop at the clock on the wall and you can go in almost any time, even after work, he'd be there, you know, working by hand without assistance or anything. And I think that's yeah. missing a lot of areas. The pride of craftsmanship and the pride of work instead of just wanting to, a job, that's different. Mm -hmm. No, I understand that for sure. Um, Gene, you're also a huge supporter of our troops. You've supported veterans organizations like Wounded Warriors Project and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Hire a Hero program. You also hosted an Aces and Angels Salute to the Troops charity event in 2011 and visited soldiers at Fort Hood with your wife, Shannon. You've also performed for troops in Iraq during a USO tour. So needless to say, you're a super supporter. So what has called you to do so much for America's heroes? My mother was uh, 14 years of age. Uh, when she was in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany. And were it not for uh, the United States military, uh, I wouldn't be here, nor would millions of other people. And yes, they were the allies and everything, but it wasn't until the United States entered the war that changed everything. Um, I can't tell you how much I owe the military, which is across party lines. The country's divided now. There's a lot of hate, there's racism and all that. But above and beyond all that, the people who choose to serve, men and women, put all those differences aside, or should, and serve a, a greater idea and ideal. And by the way, out of nowhere, about two years ago, I was invited to speak at the Pentagon when I don't think anyone spoke at the Pentagon for a year during the former president's uh, reign. And they didn't ask me to speak. I met generals and, uh, you know, Barbara Starr, there I am. And I was shocked. I was like, why do you want me? I just stick my tongue out and not much more. And when I got up, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. I didn't come with notes or anything. When I got up on the podium at CNN and all the rest of them there, like, what the hell is this guy? What's this bozo going to be talking about? It's supposed to be politics and everything else. And once I hit the podium, I knew what I had to do, which is to speak from the heart and in as few words as possible, speaking from the heart, let the world know uh, how forever indebted we are and should be to the men and women of the past, present, and the future who make up our military, because you're not going to get rich putting on that uniform. 
mostly you don't give out autographs except this guy over there in the corner <laughs> who got a podcast and oh man here I saw you <laughs> and the rewards are few and far between and you know all gave some some gave all uh, there, there certainly have been millions throughout uh, our great history perhaps a million who've given their life for an idea and you can't say that about dentists or plumbers or anything else the highest form of service in america is the military and i will continue uh to bitch slap anybody i get getting choked up <laughs> i will continue to bitch slap anybody that dares stand in front of a starbucks line uh if there's a person in uniform in back of them you get the fuck out of the way and at least have the decency. Oh, but it's getting to me now. <laughs> Hold on. I'll come back. You know, we uh, we worship superheroes, people with capes that fly through the air and do all this kind of stuff. But real superheroes exist and they're they're your sons and your daughters and they proudly wear uh, America's military uniform and it goes further you know the, the police and the firemen and all the people who sacrifice their potential safety for your safety and uh, the job I do doesn't entail that and the, all those corporate offices filled with people they don't have to risk their lives only those who serve risk their lives for next to nothing there's no greater honor Awesome. And, and we, we appreciate your love and support um, for for our military and our first responders. Uh, so you 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 said a, a mouthful, um, you know, with your kind words. And so uh, you got a very, very captive audience with you today. Uh, what special mes message would you like to share to our nation's heroes directly? I don't even know where to begin. I the world forever will be filled with good people and there are going to be some bad people my heart goes out to the people in ukraine who are bravely uh not lying down trying not to inflame the conversation because mr putin uh has clearly gone off the rails and these and i feel for the those russian uh young soldiers who, by the way, were not told, I have some friends in DC and we've had discussions, they weren't told they were going to uh, across the Ukraine. It was just a military exercise. Some of them thought it was, they were war games. So they're totally unprepared for what was happening. And uh, look, I, there's, there's no simple answer, but if America wasn't here as a, uh, deterrent let's say even if it comes down to the extreme of you know the nuclear part of it the world would be a different place unfortunately because even people who you sit across and have discussions with can turn into despots and dictators and decide to exert their will over others i'm using very soft language what what it really means is they become mass murderers because they want certain things. And Putin is, uh, has joined that club, unfortunately. And I hope it can all come to um, a peaceful end now. In the meantime, we should do everything uh, to punish that guy and the oligarchs and everybody else. But of, of course, the byproduct of that is innocent people in Russia have to bear the brunt of that higher prices the ruble is worth next to nothing and so everybody suffers because one asshole decides he wants to do something like this it's devastating i don't even know how to respond but again only the military and the brave people of uh, ukraine wow this one of one of the world's most powerful regimes is finding out that they're at a standstill and they can't even get we're in over a week and they 
they can't exert their force because the Ukrainians have decided not to lie down. By the way, the same thing happened in our War of Independence. England was one of the world's most powerful uh, countries, and they had a huge empire. But when you have 13 colonies who kind of go, no, this land is your land. This land is my land. No, no is a good word. Last thing you want to see it. Yeah, okay, I give up. They're not going to give up. And there's a good chance Russia's going to get their pants handed to them. Perhaps not in a nuclear way, not militarily, but everybody there is going to have to fight door to door, building to building. They're not going to win. And Gene, you are receiving so much love um, in our Facebook feed right now. Um, all your love towards the military um, is getting sent right back to you. Um, everyone agrees uh, when you were talking about um, military being just really high up there and giving it all um, for, for America. Uh, they agree with that. Um, there are people are in our chat too that didn't realize how funny <laughs> you were. You've had me um, laughing a lot with all your little jokes. And um, everyone's what just do you mean really, little? really- What do you mean little? What do you mean little? They're big jokes. <laughs> they, they were as huge jokes. Yeah. As a matter of well, fact, I am a joke. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to, I mean, I didn't want to give all of, I didn't want to give you all the credit because I hope that they just keep coming. That's all. That's all I meant. <laughs> <laughs> big jokes all of your hilarious big jokes gene everyone is loving it and everyone is so happy um you're here with us today and it just it means the absolute world so thank you again well i'm uh, proud to be anywhere <laughs> happy to be, just happy to be <laughs> above ground which is a good uh piece of advice by the way my mother lived to be 94 years of age and uh i still think about her every i've got photos of my mom everywhere and my mother was not well educated uh, she was born in hungary and survived then moved to israel and i was born and i was her only child and so i decided to do good i didn't have the right to shame my mother for all the hard work she did and that was my moral compass that's why i stayed away from drugs booze never got high never smoked cigarettes which is why at 72 i can put my hand in front of my face and it doesn't do that see Man. kids <laughs> no drugs no booze the schmeckle works everything's good just stay by the way you guys know what that word means i hope uh no booze, no drugs, no smoking. It doesn't. I could even understand, by the way, um, if doctors told you, "Yeah, if you use this stuff, uh, you'll run faster, you'll get bigger, uh, you'll be smarter, richer, and all this kind." But nothing happens. It doesn't work. My mother was right. Eat your vegetables, get r rid of your loser friends, get plenty of sleep, and work hard. She was right. Sounds yeah. corny, but all the other stupid idiots you have around you hey man let's go do wheelies and schmealies and and let's smoke and do that those people are wrapping fish for somebody right now or collecting your garbage which by the way is still a very honorable job so i don't i don't know what to tell you uh but i remember bringing home one of the big checks one of the first big checks and kind of, in those days there were checks children checks are pieces of paper with numbers on them and they could translate to money that's what a check is <laughs> so I, I gave my uh mom that first big check and it you know it was uh eight figures seven figures is a million and it had a lot of zeros and all that and she did she didn't understand what the number was especially since my mother never understood where i go to work or who pays me she just didn't understand no i go from city to city well who pays you i work for myself and the money comes in didn't never understood it and she said and it's a good piece of advice wonderful that's in her thick hungarian accent now what are you going to do in other words 
Don't rest on your laurels. Tomorrow's another day. Get up, you lazy bum. Go out there, make your heart pump, do some good, say nice words, and work hard. And then you'll sleep well. Everything's going to be good. Because from my mother's point of view, and it's a good piece of advice for all of you knuckleheads out there, you complain about a traffic jam or I've got a bad hair day. Of course, I always have a bad hair day. Every day above ground is a good day. If you're in America, you've hit the trifecta. I know there's racism and hate and homophobic stuff. And there are bad people and even some politicians wind up being asshole. Still the best place on the face of the planet. And if you're lucky to be living in these... Look, I come from a place called uh, the Holy Land, Israel. But don't kid yourself, this is the Holy Land. Because nowhere else on earth can people from completely di different walks of life, different ethnicities, racial groups, religions, somehow all... It's, it's difficult, it's a struggle, but they all make it work. If you go to Japan, everybody's Japanese. If you go to Russia, everybody's Russian. Try making it work and creating the best political model on earth right here with all these different peoples. And yet the greatness of America is the melting pot. You want to fly through the air? It was invented right here. You want to talk on the telephone? It was invented right here. You like television? It was invented right here. You like the meat? Invented right here. You can't, you know, 24 hour life and all for the betterment improving people's lives. Invented right here. And I'm pretty proud, Israeli. In fact, the technology for uh, cell phones was actually invented in Israel, in Haifa. Motorola Haifa invented that technology. Actually, it was a, a, a Jewish Austrian actress whose name was Hedy Lamar. She actually invented, yes, she did. Look it up in your Funkin' Wagnalls. Hedy Lamar was the most beautiful woman at the time, and she, in her spare time, invented the technology that gave you Wi-Fi, Star Wars technology, cell phones, and all that. She invented that and enabled um, the torpedoes to get to their target before the Germans were able to block it. She invented the, that technology. So, again, America the beautiful, you bet. You bet, and don't you ever forget it, because I know where you live. Absolutely. And if you want, if you want to be on Chief Chat, it was created right here. Chief Chat, right. right here. <laughs> That's right. Love it is it. Oh my goodness, you know? We could listen to you talk about history all day long, and you know you're such an OG, such a legend. But besides your incredible music career, you have numerous TV credits, and you even gave fans a peek into your personal life with your entertaining reality show, Gene Simmons Family Jewels. So what kind of interested you in television, whether it was acting or getting into reality TV? I have no idea. I, you know, you wake up in the morning and then uh, what are you gonna do? I mean, I guess it winds up being, we all, I think we all, well, first we all wanna be happy. To many people, yeah. happy means let me have fame and riches and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's one way. You want to have good health. So once you've hit the trifecta of good health and riches and fame and all this kind of stuff, what are you going to do? Stay in bed and just count the days until you die? Or are you going to get up and do stuff? And that includes philanthropy. So I, I support 1,400 kids in... Zambia and Zimbabwe um, buy food, clothing, and all that stuff, but you can't get it unless and if you go to school. If you go to school, we'll feed you, put clothing on you and all that. You don't go to school, you don't eat. It's a simple way to spread the message that education is the only way out of poverty. Um, and it doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. So that kept me busy. We also sent uh, hospitals on wheels because where there's no infrastructure in countries in Africa, uh, the people suffer and they die. So these trucks, these hospitals on wheels go and they create 
they help mothers have healthy babies and if you're suffering from AIDS, they minimize that and all that. So every one of us can do something. And because I have assets, which means money, I can do more and should. Um, so that took up some time. And then the kids were growing up and I, and I owe everything to Shannon, their mom. Um, I just work here. So the moral, the moral compass really comes from her. Mothers really are the heart of a family. We're too busy men. We're too busy being involved with our ego and it's an achievement and all this kind of stuff. And many fathers shamefully just abandon their families. That's what happened to my father. He left us when I was six or seven years old, shamefully. And I promised myself I'd never do that. I, I will always be here for it. So Nick is now 33 years old yeah. and Sophie is approaching 30. And I have bought them both homes next to each other. So they can go across and borrow a cup of sugar and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> they love each other. They're right over the hill. We're going to keep our eyes right on them. Hey, Dad, I'm going to move to Connecticut. No, you're not. You're going to be living <laughs> right over there. Keep your family close. Don't let them. Yeah, I'm going to go to Hawaii. Nope, you're not. You're going to be right here. I don't know if you ever saw my uh, big fat Greek uh, wedding, the film. Yes. And at the end. Yeah, you remember at the end where the father says, ah, I'm going to buy you a house because it's a wedding present right next door to dad. <laughs> so you can keep Don't let the kids go out there. It's a bad world. There's some bad folks out there. Keep your children close. And uh, they were just here yesterday. We watched a movie together, just joked around. Uh, we're the So the idea for Gene Simmons Family Jewels, um, extra or i think it was was interested in how mm -hmm. on stage fire and brimstone and blah, 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 you know all this kind of stuff and gee you know at home you like cookies and then you don't get high and you, it's a kind of you know normal nice why don't we visit you every once in a while and see how you're doing and that developed into the gene simmons family jewels and the result of that is we watched our kids grow up in front of our faces uh it lasted 167 episodes and uh, eight seasons. So we watched them grow up through the years. Of course, now they're embarrassed. Oh my God, look at, I looked, what am I wearing? Look at my back. <laughs> and that's what you want to do, torture your kids that way. Do your own reality Hello. show. Listen, I urge everybody, as your kids are growing up, take videos. Later on, when they start rolling their eyes, oh, you're so uncool. Oh, really? How about this? And you show them videos. Of this. <laughs> yeah. How about yeah, this for of, being uncool? Yeah, the sign of a good parent is to embarrass your child as much as possible growing up. You so got I, it, I especially in the early days. Especially in the early days when they used to poop in their diapers. Of course, I do that once a day, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Gene, you're also an entrepreneur with many successful business ventures under your belt. How did you transition from music to entrepreneur entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. <laughs> Woo, entrepreneurship. Well, and what has been your favorite business venture thus far? Well, first there was the Gutenberg Bible. Well, first there was the Bible, a book my people wrote and gave to the rest of you guys, including the <laughs> Ten Commandments. The Gutenberg Bible, when it was first printed, made the printed word come alive for the world. And first it was religion. And then with the Renaissance, which is how you pronounce that word, as new books were being written, free thought started to come into it. So information became available to everybody, whereas before the kings and queens didn't want the masses to be able to read and write because they didn't want them to know anything. They just wanted them to believe only what they say. Like Putin, who's controlling all the media, cutting off any information. Hitler did the same thing. First thing you do is cut off outside free thought and just only believe what I say. So then you had the printed word. Now there's no excuse 
for anyone out there saying, gee, I don't know how to uh, go on a diet or what to do. It's right there on your cell phone for free. Anything you want to know is right there. All you need is the time and the effort to find out who, what, when, where, and how. Having the right thing at the right place and the right time. That's all you got to do is look it up, do the research, put in the time. And so I'm involved in all sorts of things you wouldn't necessarily think I was. I'm a partner in Noble AI, an artificial intelligence uh, entity um, that is, that's got contracts with the Air Force and all kinds of amazing things. I'm, I've been proud to be given a really sweet, small piece of Alaska cold storage, which is one of the largest uh, cold storage facilities there in Alaska. And uh, it's going bigger and bigger as the day goes by. And we have a restaurant chain called Rock and Brews, B-R-E-W-S, Rock and Brews. Yes, there's uh, one two... over near me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we have two at LAX. They're all across America, and we're opening three rock and bruise casinos in the next two or three months. Yep, and we're going to be going to the openings, um, and we're in partnership with American Indians, of course, because we want that money, a lot of it, to stay with the original Americans who were, as you can imagine, uh, almost destroyed by white Europeans. And there's no other way to put that. That's what it was. These Europeans came here, and stole their land, almost wiped them out. And at least we can help them have casinos on their land and, you know, have some money for their children and their and the population. And so we've got that. Uh, casinos, food stuffs, uh, all kinds of stuff. Real estate. You don't have enough time in the day. And I have, I own the money bag logo, which is the dollar sign inside of a money bag. And oh, wow. we have money bag sodas. Get, go to moneybagsodas.com, which are in to, uh, retail shops. We have money bag vodka, moneybagvodka.com, which is five times distilled vodka. Although I don't drink, you know, but. Life should be, you should get your own menu and you should be able to pick whatever you want for you, even though I don't engage. Uh, so there are other things too. I own other trademarks and lots of other stuff. You don't have enough time in the day because you're talking to a guy who likes the sound of his own voice. That's not a good comment. <laughs> yeah, and and you, you kind of gave some really good advice to our military members that are uh, wanting to be entrepreneurs, like you said, uh, you got everything in the palm of your hand. So it's all about, you know, just putting putting that time in and and doing your research and and, uh, you know, believing in yourself. Um, life, life really is about choices. Uh, who are you going to hang with? I've written a few books, too. Uh, one is called Me Inc. Me Incorporated. You got to start with yourself. Can you manage your own finances? How much do you make? How much do you pay taxes? Uh, you know, all, all that stuff. How much do you spend on stupid stuff? Going to the bar and treating your friends for booze or going on vacations when you're young. These are all bad decisions. You're young, you don't need to go on a vacation. There's nothing, you know, and you don't need to go to the bar. You don't need to, you want booze? Buy a goddamn bottle of wine and be quiet. You don't need to do the big, boost stuff that's all money that's coming out of your pocket and that's pre-tax you still have to pay tax on money so uh if you're the high-end tax bracket you're paying two pennies to earn one because one of the pennies is the government's your government is your partner on the other hand the government gives you nuclear armed forces a highway system health care firemen police pretty fair trade but get rid of your loser friends. Get rid of them. They're not going to help you. Uh, when you're young, don't get married. I know she wants to. What does it all mean? Do I have my mother's hips? Don't marry her. Don't marry <laughs> until you can afford to be married. Marriage is expensive. It is. Because most guys 
especially in the military, if you're 19, 20 years old, don't have a sweetheart, have 10 sweethearts, I don't care what you do, don't get married. As soon as you get married, you're going to have to earn enough money for two at least. Your child comes, now you got three. You got mortgages, car payments, and all that stuff. And many young couples split up because the male often wasn't prepared and didn't think about the cost of it. And then you have two children and three children. Don't do that. And and the the sad part of this is that women who are the life givers and all that are left holding the baby when the when the immature father disappears. And the statistics are horrifying. In some areas of our society, something like 70% of all households, I don't want to get too specific, uh, don't have a father figure at home, whether you're married or not. Um, it goes down to about 55%. And that's horrific. Don't get married young. And ladies, don't marry young guys. Don't do it. I know he's got muscles and a big, deep voice and a hairy chest and all this stuff. Nope. That's a 14-year-old horny kid. He's not ready. He looks, he's just like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't wait. Get, get with an older guy. Let him get that stuff out of his system or most of it. You'll be happier. He'll be able to work for a living and he'll stop doing stupid things like wheelies and having 10 chicks around him like ants on a picnic. Do you get the visual? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When he's a young guy, he doesn't have. Because ladies, the male of the species has blood, but not enough blood for two heads. Once the, he once the blood rushes down to the other head, he'll make bad decisions. Man. Don't hang out with young, don't hang out with young guys. Get an older guy or well, older gal. Well, I, I see Take why the... Yeah, I, I see why yeah. the, the show is called Family Jewels, because you, you're dropping nothing but jewels right here, right now. <laughs> well, I'm, look, uh, life life is short, and it's going to come back to your decisions. Uh, and then you die. And you can't do the woulda, coulda, shoulda when it's too late. I know what it's going to say on my tombstone. It's going to say thank you and good night. Awesome, awesome. So uh, switch gears until you're uh, to the end of the road tour. So you got your end of the road tour coming up. So Kiss has such a huge discography. So uh, what's the process in narrowing down your catalog into a set list for the tour? And what can fans expect from Kiss when they attend the show? It's the eternal tug and pull of, hey, let's do some chestnuts, some stuff that uh, the fans haven't heard us play ever live. And then there's the other side. Yeah, we come down from the heavens. Can you see that? Yeah, I can. That's awesome. Nobody does that. And the the drum set, by the way, also comes down from the sky because when the curtain goes down, you can't see anything on stage. And then it all just it's the party. Of and you can tap your foot to it. Um, the, the thing about it is that Again, my voice, I like the sound of it. I forgot your question. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no it, it, how, do you, how, do you, how do you pull, how do you figure out what do you want to... Oh, oh, the uh, set list. The, the, the set, set list, list yeah. is, uh, yeah, the set list tends to wind up going with the assumption that a fan maybe is seeing Kiss for the first time. And so that means they want to hear, I was made for loving you. Do, 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 do. They want to hear that. They want to hear rock and roll all night. They want to hear shout it out loud. You want to hear the more familiar songs. Uh, I've gone to see the Stones, one of my favorite bands of all time, many times. And when Mick comes out and says, okay, here's a new song off the uh, newest record we just put out, everybody sits down. And then when they play Satisfaction, everybody jumps up and goes, yeah. So we like that yeah thing. The, the test is... Um, do the fans stay on their feet the whole show? They do. And that's because you pummel them with, with visuals and with sound and special effects and all that. And there has never been, I'm proud to say, there's never been a fight at any of our shows, thousands of shows. And there are two reasons why. 
first you play too loudly for the drunken asshole over there who's making a fool of himself you can't hear what he's going to say anyway and two is there's too much going on stage too much you know all this imagery and explosions and all that you don't want to look to the side to see this guy going look look i'm drooling and i'm eating my snot and going, you don't care and there are no fights at our concerts most peaceful area nobody's ever going out on stretchers nothing No, that's exciting. We are so excited for the chance to see Kiss on stage this year. I know I'm probably going to carpool with Emily and her mom to one of the best Yo, venues. Yes. For you guys. <laughs> um, My mom so we is know the dragging us there. there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so she really can't like Where are you guys? Yes, what, what mom. Where are you guys? Dallas. Oh, we're in Texas. Dallas, Texas. All of you? Oh, yeah. No. Yes. Oh, you're all in Texas. <laughs> Well, we'll be down there. In fact, I think I know, you know, I have everything here. Again, you can have all your <laughs> the list, all here, the list of shows, boom, you know where it is. It's right here. All the information you'd ever want, like uh, like a magic box, like a, a pool of secretaries and assistants and everybody else right there, Absolutely. which is why I never understand anybody. Yeah, tie, tying my shoelaces, I never figured it out. Look at your cell phone. Look it up. How do I tie my shoelaces? <laughs> It'll tell you. Now, you'd be surprised how many people don't know they can use their phone to look up simple things, Gene. So thanks for reiterating that because, you know, some people need to know. We don't want you texting us, asking us everything, you know, what to do. You can look it up yourself. <laughs> but speaking of. And, 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 and one last thing. Minimize your time on TikTok and SchmickTok and all the other time wasting things. <laughs> Unless you're an influencer. If you're making lots of money, God bless. Look, right. look at me. I'm picking my nose in here for 30 seconds. And, and if you can get millions of people in our living doing that, fantastic. But the rest of you, stop it. Put a little time into that. Mostly use that handheld magic device to learn more. Learn stuff you don't know. It'll make you more money. I like money. Maybe you do too. No, for it's sure. Right. Oh, more specific. More specifically, I like crypto, Ethereum, <laughs> Bitcoin, Litecoin. I like a lot of them. I've done very well. No, I love it. That's something I need to use my phone for is learning more about crypto for sure. Because I'm still, you know, well, not start, the, the well, freshest. Start, start off. Start off with. What is Bitcoin? And you're going to see a four-year-old girl who comes on and she talks like this and she explains it. <laughs> it's oh, wow. fascinating. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll Google because, that for sure. Yeah. And start small. Always start small. You know, you want to find out about crypto or about gold or about oil. I invest, invested in oil as well because there's a war and that's what happens. Buy low, sell high. And so, even though the price is down today, but it's going to go back up. Um, start small. You know, when, when there's a hot tub, you don't know what the temperature is, put your toe in. You don't want to go, go, go right in. It might burn you. Right. So start small. Just go in steps. And the more you know, the wiser your decisions are going to be. I love that. But um, back to the show. You're always bringing the heat, literally. Um, a coworker and I, we were talking about your shows, you know, back in the day, even now. He's an OG music journalist. And he was just telling me how, you know, back in the day, like your hair actually what's, caught what's, on fire. What's, what's, what's OG? Original gangster? Is that what that is? Yeah, but you can, <laughs> you can use yeah. it as like someone who's a legend in their their arena like they know it all they've been around the block OG? multiple times that's an og yeah. yeah i learned i learned something i learned something. oh yeah and you didn't have Yay. to google it either you didn't have to google it you, you learned it on chief chat yeah. uh, original g original gene i got it original g there original you go. Gene. Gene. i love it no gene you gotta put that on a t-shirt and sell it uh maybe not that one but okay <laughs> <laughs> hilarious but how many close calls have you had when it comes to all the pyrotechnics involved in the show oh my goodness i fly up to the uh, top of the light truss 50 feet above the ground uh on various tours and i've 
Uh, oh, there, there. I have to spit fire. <laughs> I've caught fire about uh, six times. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anybody doing that. Nobody does that on stage. There are fire no. breathers in in circuses and everything. I have no idea why I wanted to do that. Just a big show off and look what I can do and stuff. I remember when I was a little kid uh, in Israel, we had an ant um, come over and we were all sitting around. I was like a little putz. And I remember my aunt used to have lipstick drawn way above her lips, just like, like a clown. Just She wanted her lips to be bigger. I don't know what it is, but I always looked at her mouth and was like, wow, that's the red goes way above her mouth. And so I, I was wearing these loose kind of uh, underwear kind of things. <laughs> and, and they, you know, they were not well fitted because, we you know, we were really poor. Our father, my father left us and my mother worked six days a week. So, you know, we barely had enough, but I didn't know anything. I just had a piece of bread and jam and I was happy. And so the ant comes over, and I don't know why, but I got up on the coffee table, I must have been four or five, and started doing a stupid dance. And my aunt started laughing her head off, and I didn't understand what was going on. But apparently, because I was wearing oversized underwear, the fly was... Uh, <laughs> The fly was uh, sort of open, you know, it's like a flap, but because they were grown up underwear, the, it was kind of open. So as I was playing, the, the birdie kept jumping up and down and as I was dancing on the thing. And I'll never forget the more, most horrifying thing is I saw her mouth come towards me, you know, go, oh, he's so cute, I'm gonna kiss him. And this big red thing came over me. And I, later on, I looked in the mirror you know, after they left, I didn't know what was going on. Oh, my God, I was covered with, you know, all this red stuff. It was a horrifying moment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's a great story. And um, as a reminder for our viewers, the End of the Road Farewell Tour kicks off this spring. You can head to kissonline.com slash tour for show information. Um, I just got a message from my mom on the side that she would like to go to the Croatia one. So, oh, Kiana, if you oh, what's, what's, come what's to Croatia with us. My mom's name is what's Debbie. Name? Oh, oh, yeah, I remember Debbie. Yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> Debs. Debbie. Yeah. yeah, Debbie, we love Debbie. <laughs> yeah, oh, love she's going to love that. Thank you. And as we say goodbye, where can fans go to follow you and keep up with all things Gene Simmons? Well, you can go to genesimmons.com uh, and they've got info at genesimmons.com, uh, whatever that's called. But it's on genesimmons.com. I'm on Twitter. My daughter, Sophie, has got me apparently on Facebook or Instagram, but I never check it. You just don't <laughs> have enough time in the daytime. I mean, what are you gonna find there? Somebody picking their nose for 30 seconds and then somebody else, look, I fell, I fell down the stairs. Isn't that interesting? And there are people who stay on there the whole day. So a little bit of that is okay. But there's so much good stuff happening in the palm of your hands. And the best way for you to get ahead in life is just to keep asking questions. Really? I, how do I brush my teeth? Where do I go? I'm looking for this kind of a job. What's, I want to be a country and Western singer. Should I live in Paris? Siri will tell you, no, jackass, not in Paris. Go to Nashville. <laughs> It'll tell you. You mean I shouldn't go to Paris to be a country and Western singer in English? No, you shouldn't. That little handheld device. So ask ask Siri questions. Absolutely. And, and uh, before we get before we go, I want to kind of tell you a quick story. We had we had um, a, a lead vocalist for the group Four Trips Ahead, uh, Peter Wilson, on a few weeks ago. And uh, we, we asked him about who who was his inspirations in, in life uh, as he came up. And he, he told he mentioned you. Right. And, and he told us a quick story about how his his dad uh, got him into this party at 17 that he shouldn't have been in. He was way too young to be there. But he said that you were in the middle, middle of a conversation with a bunch of probably high ex executives or something. And you, you pointed him out of a crowd. You were like, hey, 
um, you know, and you start a conversation with him and he he literally like lit up telling the story like he, he's he said that made me feel so good as a 17 year old uh, rock and roll uh, kind of, you know, fan. And, and, and he knew that's what he wanted to do with his life. And he said you kind of stopping your conversation just to talk to him uh, really, really inspired him. He said that later on that that evening uh, he ended up on the couch and you end up coming sit right next to him and had a conversation about just life in general. And so he 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 like I said, those type of interactions are stick with people to the day they die. So, man, that was an awesome story. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell Gene Simmons about the story. So, Peter, if you're out there, Peter Wilson, if you're out there uh, uh, watching, uh, I, I let Gene know and he's, he's smiling right now uh, talking about this story. That's awesome. Well, it's you're, you're very kind and I'm sure our young friend is going out there and making plans to rule the world and all that. And the rest of you out there reach out to the young, put a kind hand out because they're going to inherit this place, this this world. We're all going to be gone at some point. Okay, we're just all passing through. I know it sounds corny, but you see a young face, reach out, try to put the light on, you know, give them that spark that says, hey, maybe I can do better, I can work harder, you know, I can be kinder, I can do all that stuff. And if you multiply that by a billion or a few billion, boy, this world's going to shine. And there's a simple idea. I firmly believe it's all our job to leave this place a little bit better than when we came into it. It's a simple idea. If all of us, hey, you want to make the world a lot better? Everybody contributes one dollar. One dollar. That's seven billion dollars. And that's not counting the rich folks and all that stuff. So little, little things especially reaching out, take the time to reach out to young people. You're really, you're really going to make a difference. And then you got to pass it up. Absolutely. So uh, for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify so you can rewatch with your friends or catch up on past episodes. Uh, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, March 22nd. Felix, Felix Cavalier. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. Yeah, Felix Cavalier is on the show. So y'all come oh, in and check God. us out. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm such a fan they were they were the young rascals then they became the rascals dino Danelli, eddie brigatti gene cornish felix cavalier they were on atco i know this stuff i used to follow i used to go see them when they played the clubs wow gene, gene you're awesome. like an encyclopedia britannica you're like a, <laughs> <laughs> you're like the whole set you know, my grandma you know, no, you mentioned ahead. an important thing. When I first came to America, I went to what's called a yeshiva, Jewish theological seminary and stuff. And in the morning, you study the Bible, and then in the afternoon, reading, writing, arithmetic, and all this kind of stuff. So 7 a.m. till 9.30 p.m. They were very, very tough. Didn't play, you know, all that. But um, during the day, you'd have a one- or two-hour break. And we were in Williamsburg. Brooklyn, 206 Wilson Street. See, if you don't get hot, you can remember the addresses and things that happened, oh, 60 years ago. And in my free time, I would go into the library, which was half a block away, because the books were free. Yeah. Anything you wanted to look at, you didn't have to buy. And you could watch newsreels and look at newspapers. It was free. So I'm the only one I ever met who read the Encyclopedia Britannica, cover to cover. Oh, wow. All kinds of stuff I never thought I was interested in or knew. So I learned that Australopithecus Africanus was discovered in the Olduvai Gorge in Tanganyika by Ellis Leakey, otherwise known as Australopithecus afarensis, which were one of our bipeds, the ability to stand upright and see the predators coming towards you. The ones who were able to stand up longer could see the predators coming, so they would survive, and that's why we walk upright. The other ones who stayed on all four were eaten up. Ta-da! I didn't know that. It's free. <laughs> there used to be children. There used to be things called libraries, and they were books made of trees with paper, where all the information of mankind, now womankind, was in there and now it's in the palm of your hands 
So that's why there's no excuse for, hey, man, I didn't know that. First of all, cut it out with the man and find out. Stop talking idiot stuff and find out what you need to know so you can make more money, so you can give more to philanthropy, so you can help out your mom with the hip operation she needs. And it's all on your shoulders. It's your responsibility to learn more so you can make more money and then make a bigger impact for good. Well, or Gene, I know if you if you if you didn't make it in music, making money, you definitely would have made a bunch of money on Jeopardy. Uh, you to clean that whole show out. <laughs> so, so I, I don't know. I don't know if you ever got that opportunity in your life, but yeah, that they they probably ban you from Jeopardy because you win every week. Well, it's, it's interesting you say that because you can look up uh, Gene Simmons on Jeopardy, and I in full makeup, I co-hosted uh, one of the shows. One of my favorite <laughs> shows because it's about information and how do those yeah. people know that? They looked it up. They didn't just Absolutely. like, I was born. Yeah, I knew that. No, you didn't. You know, where's, uh, <laughs> where, are the Mal- where are the Maldives? Do you know where the Maldives are? Uh, listen, I'm not. Uh, I got it on my phone. It's, it's, it's right here. Gene, it's right here. It's right, it's, it's right there. <laughs> It's right there. I know somebody who's going to the Maldives. There are about a thousand islands and so on. And they, they are a legitimate uh, republic country. It's right, not far from the Indian Ocean. And so how do you know that stuff? You ask. Hey, where is... Uh... Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm, me and Siri are best friends from here on out. Like, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere without actually, her. So. Actually, actually, Siri and I. Siri and I. Oh. That's, hey. I thought, I thought you taught like American history, not not English. Man, you're an English teacher too. <laughs> well, at part, no, no. I was uh, sixth grade was reading, writing, and arithmetic, so it was a general thing. You didn't get specific classes until later on, seventh or eighth okay, grade. Gotcha. gotcha, man. It's been, it's been an awesome show, and also just want to plug our next show. Also, eleven a.m. on Tuesday, March the 29th, we have talk show host Daphne Oz is going to join the show. So uh, we got, we got, of course, we got a an amazing interview today, and then we have a couple of amazing interviews coming up next week. But uh, Gene, man, it's been an awesome conversation. You've dropped a lot of uh, jewels on us uh, as as military members, as as civilians, as people, as men, as women. Uh, we, we've kind of hit the whole entire gambit uh, with this interview. So I just want to thank you for you know you've been in with us for the last hour and fifteen minutes, and uh, I know. You, you got a lot of like stokes in the, uh, what is that? A lot of stuff in the fire or whatever the case may be. Iron. You're a, iron. Iron. There you iron, go. Iron. And that, yeah, comes so you gotta, from, that comes from King James, 18, uh, 1658. <laughs> it had to do with uh, the women whose heads he kept chopping off. He had one coming oh, after no. the other and he'd always be cooking different. He was a big guy. He'd always be cooking meat and more than, more than one iron in the fire. Oh, well, let's, let's not use that one anymore. Cause I didn't, I didn't know he was cutting people's head off, <laughs> but uh, you got a lot of stuff going on in your life. And uh, we appreciate you for taking the time to, uh, to talk to us in our military community. Uh, like I said, you, you, you said a mouthful when you said that, you know, there's no other profession uh, that's that's higher than than those who serve, and, and there's no greater honor than, than than honoring those who serve. And we appreciate that. Uh, we we do this. We don't do this for the money. We don't do. We do this because we care about our country. So uh, thank you so yeah. much for your kind words and the and, and the continued support you have for our military community and our nation's heroes. I wish you guys all the best and a good piece of advice from Ellen DeGeneres. As a matter of fact, she ends her shows with. Uh, a really important message and i can't lay claim to it be kind to each other we should we should re- it's not a big deal thank you and i appreciate it and stuff like that the world needs some civility it's a little harsh out there you know open the door for somebody then if you don't like them put your foot out and make him trip but at least open the door <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we're gonna go out. We're, we're gonna go out on the note. But Gene, if you don't mind hanging on with us till uh, after the live, so we can say our formal goodbyes. But uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, do something kind for somebody. May peace be put to the world. And uh, Chief Chat out. <laughs>